Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode in our Malware for Python series. In this one, we're going to be doing a port scanner, um, which is really easy to do in Python. Um, I want to start off this video by saying don't, you don't, it, it can be seen as a, well, I'm pretty sure it is illegal to go out and port scan other machines or uh, servers that you don't own. There are some websites, uh, there's one called like hackthissite.com or I can't remember exactly what it's called, but there are websites designed out there to let you try and hack them and port scan them. But for the most part, this is um, something you want to test on your own equipment. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and port scan our VM that we set up. And what port scanning's done, it's used as a reconnaissance tool. So what you're trying to do is find open ports on a machine and once you find a port that's open that has something listening on it, you can throw traffic into it to try and exploit that service that's listening to it. Um, for instance, um, say I port scan uh, 3389. Uh, well, 3389 is used as RDP. So if I port scan our VM, uh, I don't have RDP on it, but say I did port scan our VM and I get a result back saying, hey, 3389 is open. Well, me as an attacker, I can be like, oh, man, they're using RDP on that machine, and I can start trying to brute force RDP and try and remote onto their uh, their virtual machine desktop. Um, so that's just an example, but you could also port scan another port like, uh, I don't know, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but you could port scan something else, and it's like port 4000, and you're like, oh, this program uses 4000, and there's a known exploit out there for it. I can throw that exploit into that uh, port and uh, break their system or do whatever the exploit's supposed to do. Um, so let's go ahead and log into our VM here. Uh, so let me maximize this. The first thing I want to do, I actually want to find out what ports are listening um, on this machine. And the way you can do that, if you go to CMD uh, command prompt and just type in netstat, and I always throw the flags in AO out of habit on there because it gives me the information I want. I'll just do net, net stat space hyphen NAO and hit enter. If you scroll up and see, uh, remember the IP address on this machine is dot one four six, so right here. Uh, you'll see all these one nine two one six eight one one four sixes, and you'll see these ports listed off to the side. So these are all the ports on the machine that are actually have services listening on them. And if you want to find out what the actual program is, uh, this last column, this PID, is your process ID. So for instance, this line right here, it's saying, hey, this machine is listen something's listening on 139 and it's process number four. Uh, the easiest way to figure that out, if the actual name of the process, if you go to task manager and click details at the top, sort by this PID column. And number four, it's something called system. So it's like it, all these, we haven't done anything with this VM, so these are all Windows processes that are listening. But uh, let's try and scan this VM and see what ports are open and what ports are closed. Um, so let's, let's open uh, Python here, and here's the last tutorial I just did. But let's make a new project. Wait for it to load up. It'll take just a second. Let's go ahead and make a new file. Just call it main import socket because we're going to be using the socket module to, to send traffic over to it. Um, so I'm going to do IP address and it's going to equal 192.168.1. I keep forgetting what it is. Hold on. It is 146. So say we're trying to, we know the, about this machine and we're trying to port scan it to find what ports are open. Uh, was it 146? I forgot again because I'm an idiot. Yeah, 146. Um, so we can actually do a, uh, let's go ahead and make our socket object. So with socket.socket, .socket, uh, socket AF INET, and it's a, we're going to do TCP, so sock stream as s so now we have our socket object um, what we can do we can do try we can make a try accept statement and do try um, 
uh, s dot connect and we're going to connect to one nine two dot well, right, well actually we made a variable for it connect to that IP address and we're going to connect on port one three nine uh, oh and it wants it in tuple form that's why it's giving me that error uh, and if it so it what's gonna do is gonna hit this try block it's gonna try and connect using this IP address and port however if it if it times out and fails it's gonna hit our accept block down here so in the if it fails we'll say failed to connect to port and actually let's do this let's make let's make a variable called port we'll just put 139 and then put port there that way we can use this f string and put the port in there but if it success, uh, successfully connects we'll do uh, port 139 is open and listening so let's go ahead and try this out uh, so again, we're making a socket object and we're saying, hey, try to do this. Try and connect to that the VM on port 139. If it's got something listening on it, it'll print this out. But if it doesn't, it'll just say failed. So let's go ahead and click run. And immediately it says port 139 is open and listening. If we pick a port where nothing's listening, what it actually does, it'll sit here for a while and try and connect. So it'll go kind of slow um, so let's pick a port where I know nothing's listening so I don't think anything was listening on 140 so let's do uh, do that let's see this will actually sit here and take a second um, well then it, it took like maybe a second and a half but if you're trying to scan a bunch of ports it can take some time um, so why don't we do this why don't we erase all this and we'll do 4i in range and we'll do something like scan ports 100 through 150. So now we'll do try uh, s.connect and we'll connect to that IP address and the port the ports now represent as i cuz we're going to we're going to actually we'll change this. We'll change this to where it says port and get rid of this one. So IP address and port combination. We'll try and connect to it. If it does connect, we'll put success or we'll put port is open and listening. And if it fails, we'll put port is closed. Okay, so what this will do is it'll check ports 100 through 150. And as you can see, they're all popping up down here. They're all going to say closed because I, if I remember correctly, I don't think there was anything before 149 that was open. Or 139. 139 was the open one. Uh, it looks like 135 is open. I'm not Steam. I'm not Notepad. I want PyCharm. But uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is... I'm actually going to show you how to speed this up using threads because it takes a while because it's it's doing this one line at a time. So if it sits on this s dot connect and and it's not immediately open, it's going to have to sit here and time out, which takes like a second and a half. Um, but if we do multi-threading, we can have it check like ten ports at once. So for every one of these that pops up, we can have ten pop up pop up because we had uh, ten different threads check ten ports at once. So it's a lot faster. So that's what I'm going to be doing in our uh, in the next episode. I'll show you how to use the multi-threading module to do multiple ports at once. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Have a good one.